in general, when people go to see an integrative practitioner, uh, someone like a naturopathic doctor who, um, you know, kind of looks at the whole person from a holistic perspective, um, the first thing that we do is to try and figure out what's going on. And sometimes that means looking for things other than hormones, right? So oftentimes women will come in and say, I know it's my hormones. Can you help me feel better? And as over the course of talking to them and getting their history and learning about them, it's like, well, it actually might not be your hormones. So the first thing is to really work with somebody who can look at your symptoms through the lens of perimenopause, but also has the experience and the knowledge to look for other things that could be important too. So sometimes, you know, people will, um, you know, get great advice from a friend or a neighbor or a sister, but it's not the right advice for them because maybe it wasn't the hormones. So first thing that we do is we get a really good history of what's happening now, but also what your reproductive history was. So did you have PCOS? Did you have endometriosis? Um, did you have difficulty getting pregnant? Was there any, did you have irregular cycles? Was there anything in your history that can help us to maybe figure out what's going on or to figure out if this is actually perimenopause? menopause or maybe it's part of the other condition that you had. We might look at testing, we might look at hormone levels, but for the most part perimenopause is, is diagnosed by symptoms, right? There isn't a single test that can tell us whether you're perimenopausal. There is for menopause, we can measure a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone and if it's above a certain level we can be pretty sure that your ovaries aren't working anymore. But we don't have a test like that in perimenopause because most women are still have enough hormone that they're having a period. And if you're still having a period, there's no blood test that's going to be able to tell us more than what a good history and conversation will be able to tell us. So a lot of what I would do with someone is having a conversation about how are you sleeping? Um, are you, do you have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep? Have you started waking up in the middle of the night? And is that new for you? Um, have you started to notice that you're feeling hotter or warmer a few days before your period? And is that new for you? Do you feel anxious for no reason? And is that new for you? So it's a lot of trying to figure out what's new, what's different, um, and when it's happening in the cycle. So once we can really start to stage someone and say, okay, I think you're in very early perimenopause, we can be more certain that we need to work on supporting progesterone, for example. Um, and so we would use a combination of diet, lifestyle, herbal medicine, maybe acupuncture, those types of treatment options to, again, help support this normal process, right? This is not a disease. This isn't something that ought, that, that needs to be hit over the head in, you know, in order to be kind of stamped out. We really just need to support the body through this process. And there's so much that we can do with food and with herbal medicine um, and with integrative treatment options. So that's definitely something that's interesting. So really, we're not, you know, again, it's, we're not curing anything. It's more of, so the way I'm hearing this is, as we enter this life stage, there are things that happen that can feel disruptive to your day to day. And there are things you can do to ease that. Yeah. So here's a perfect example. So um, because perimenopause, like I always say, is defined by inconsistency, understanding that a lot of that inconsistency has to do with fluctuating levels of estrogen, right? So because the number of eggs that we have and the number of follicles that we have shifts a little bit from month to month, um, our estrogen levels can actually vary pretty wildly in perimenopause. You know, we often think about estrogen decline as being the most important piece, but it's actually not, it's the variability. And with that variability, we can have changes in sleep, we can have changes in uh, serotonin production. So estrogen levels can help to support serotonin production. So as estrogen levels go higher, serotonin can be higher. As estrogen levels can be lower, serotonin can be lower. We can also have effects of cortisol. So cortisol being a stress hormone, that can have an impact on other hormones. So a lot of these things, which may not have even been noticeable in our 20s and 30s, because we had this nice steady level of hormones, are now very noticeable. They're now front and center. So if we can support that fluctuating level of estrogen, if we can support uh, neurotransmitter production, you know, if we can support managing that stress level, then the hormone symptoms will be less noticeable and more manageable. So if, you know, sometimes we're not treating the hot flashes, we're treating the things that are interfering with how your body copes with that change. Got it. So with, 
so I guess, you know, if, if you look at the optimal way a woman's body evolves, meaning let's assume we have a woman that you're working with and you know she's not sleeping great and it's been regulated and then menopause happens and you have that whole shift in estrogen yeah like, you know again like I, I, I don't know this space very well so i'm really excited to to learn here is um we hear vaginal dryness mm -hmm. we hear you go on the hormone therapy which i hear yep. re different reviews about whether or not it's yeah for sure you need to be on it and then, but then I also hear women say, oh my God, your fifties are the best. So I'm hearing yeah. like these changes where it's like, oh my God, it seems like it's over and it's hard. And like, you know, sex is so different, but then fifties are the best. So can you, <laughs> since you see these women and like know the, the symptoms and not the Instagram posts of how everything's great, um, right. understand like what, when we get to the end part, what should we expect and how do we live that amazing 50s life um, and, and what that might look like? Right, so that's a great question because one of my big whys is, you know, helping women to understand that perimenopause and menopause is not a death sentence. It is not the end of the world. Life does not go downhill after this, but it could be a rocky kind of few years. Right. And so um, I use the analogy of you're going to get there either way, but you can choose to either take the bumpy road or the paved road. Right. And so the paved road is where you pull in your supports. And that could be support from integrative practitioners like myself. That could be support from a pelvic floor therapist. It could be support from a psychologist. It could be, support from a family doctor or gynecologist, but it's about building that team of people who can help to cushion you through those bumpy rides, right? And when women don't get that support, when they're left to kind of just drown and, you know, kind of flail and try and make it to the other side of the lake without support, I think that's when women get to the end and they feel exhausted, right? That by the time they hit their 50s, they're like, oh my God, I have nothing left in me to give right? I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I haven't slept for 10 years. I've been dealing with all this stuff and it can take them a really long time to recover. But when women are supported, when they're taught what's happening and when they're taught how to, you know, sometimes I hesitate to use the word manage, but when they're taught to kind of cope with these changes as normal and natural, they feel empowered. And when you come through that, when you come through this experience that, you know, you share with half the planet, because we all go through it in some way or another, it can, it can energize you. It can really motivate you to want to do, you know, your best in other parts of your life. So I think that what I really want women to understand and, and what I, I'm starting to see on social media, and I love to see kind of women saying, it doesn't have to suck and it isn't going to suck. Like you don't have to look at this as the beginning of the end, right? You know, it's not that everything goes downhill. It's that everything changes and let's work on that change together and let's support you through that change so that you can actually feel better on the other side than you did before. 